All right, guys, Jacob back with you. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's uh, kind of going to be another different of a day. Uh, it's been a while since I made a video, and this would be a car that you guys have maybe seen on the channel, but uh, I've never really talked about. So uh, this is our uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E. 100% electric vehicle. Really cool. Uh, we've had it now for, I don't know, since May, so a few months now. Uh, and today is going to be a video like showing a day in the life with the Mach-E. So driving around, picking a destination, going out to the park, about a 35-40 minute drive. Uh, be hanging out there for a bit and I'll be coming back. So this will be a, a way to talk about the car, talk about the features that it has, talk about the life of essentially switching to electric, and uh, kind of like the really the pros and cons, uh, if you could say there are any. Alright, so uh, here we go. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Essentially, it's a 40 minute drive to the park. Uh, and what you'll hear going off now is a whole bunch of the uh, the sensors in and around the vehicle. Really cool. It has uh, like the whole bird's eye view, uh, which really makes backing up out of areas uh, and parking pretty easy. Uh, I mean, the beeping can be annoying, I suppose, um, but it, it definitely is a nice safety feature to have. Um, as you're driving in and around uh, the city or the area, wherever wherever you're at. Uh, so we charge this vehicle to um, a 90% charge. Generally, anywhere between 85 and 90%, we try to leave it there. Um, one thing we didn't know when we got the vehicle, uh, like with, I guess, any electric vehicle or anything that has a battery, is that when you, I guess, have a battery, in order to extend the life of the battery itself, you're never supposed to charge uh, the device uh, and keep it at 100% the entire time. I didn't know that. Uh, I, I think that might be the reason why my phone always dies and probably why my, I just recently had to replace a laptop battery as well. Uh, so maybe that's the case, uh, but erring on the side of caution instead of charging it all the way to 100%, uh, like I said before, we generally keep it at about um, 90 uh, if we have to use it to go to work or about 85%. Uh, and the only time we charge it to 100% would be uh, if we're doing like some type of long distance trip, uh, maybe going to see like a uh, family uh, down in Florida or something like that. Um, but it's super impressive. So when Ford released the Mach-E, uh, they mentioned that you'll have with the standard range battery, which this has, um, you, you're only looking at 230 miles per charge. Uh, but as many people have already stated, Ford definitely uh, underestimated uh, those numbers because, I mean, they'd rather have customers, uh, I guess, pleased at the fact that they get more miles per gallon or more miles per charge, excuse my old terminology, uh, versus uh, customers getting this vehicle and then finding out they have less than that uh, and then it really kind of detracts them from the vehicle itself. Uh, but at we're at an 89% charge right now and the car is showing that we have a 240 mile range. So I would imagine that at a, a full charge at 100%, the car probably will get around 250, 260. Uh, Per, per charge itself. Uh, and there's a lot of factors that go into that, right? So uh, driving around, uh, if you're one of those people that like to, to gun it at every stoplight, uh, now don't get me wrong, like I've seen plenty of videos out there on the, the new Tesla Plaid, uh, and it's freaking ridiculous. If I had that car, uh, I'd probably be launching it like all the other owners I've seen every chance I get. Um, but uh, if you drive responsibly uh, with this car uh, and you're not really hot dog in and around town, um, I'm still going the speed limit, no issue. I take the interstate to work, going about 72, 73 miles per hour every day. Um, and th there's still no issue with it and the driving characteristics still show uh, 240 miles. Uh, with that being said, uh, I did want to talk about some other kind of little, I guess, features and I guess complaints uh, that a lot of people have when it comes to uh, these vehicles. Um, or not complaints, but I guess, 
conflicts they would see in their mind when it, when it comes to the idea of switching from between a gas vehicle uh, and going 100% fully electric. Uh, so the first complaint uh, or worry I would say is the uh, lack of availability for chargers, right? Um, which was, I mean, I think is a pretty honest concern, you know, uh, until getting this vehicle, we had no idea uh, the amount of chargers there were in any given area. Because, I mean, as if you're driving a conventional gas or diesel vehicle, you know, like, who, who cares? You, you don't, it's not one of those things you look for until you really do that switch. Uh, or maybe if you, even if you're driving a hybrid, like, you, you might know, you might know this already. Um, so it, it's actually pretty cool to see. Um, you can go online, uh, type in like the Ford Pass app, and uh, it'll show you all the chargers in a given area. Uh, and it's really cool, so uh, Ford has kind of integrated that map feature and that search feature into their car. So in this huge 15 inch display, which you'll see uh, in the mock, um, it has a, like a de in the destination feature itself, so you can type in, uh, hey, like we're currently in Savannah, we wanna go to Miami six hour drive no big deal the computer uh will map out your entire route selecting charge stations along the way uh and there'll be there'll be fast chargers or quick chargers and i'll get into the, the uh, differences between all those uh momentarily uh, but they'll select charges for you along the way uh and then all the way to your final destination and with that being said too so you'll be able to also distinguish whether or not you want to really stretch your legs in the vehicle and what I mean, what I mean by that is, uh, driving around, uh, if you're really not comfortable at, at getting close to, I don't know, maybe a 15% charge or a 20 or 25% charge, if you feel more comfortable uh, only getting the vehicle down to maybe 40 or or maybe 50%, you can set that all up in your uh, your profile characteristics, and the vehicle will actually stop or, or choose destinations or choose charging stations. Uh, a lot closer and, uh, and less spaced out so that your vehicle won't get that low while you're doing these cross-country trips however if you're like I like uh, like like us we like to you know like we don't like to stop too often uh, you're gonna have to stop regardless probably I would say probably every two and a half hours uh, mm, to charge the vehicle and get it back up uh, get some juice in it uh, so for us I mean that's plenty of time uh, going two and a half hours we'll have the dog with us or something like that so we could uh, just drive uh, two and a half hours later plenty enough time to let the dog out uh, get him a drink of water for us to stretch our legs maybe get some a bite to eat and then we're back on the road uh, so it, it's, it's super convenient uh, and it's really eye-opening to see um, we are looking at all different places uh, across the country and from what we've seen the only place that really is uh, limited on chargers is our kind of places out west uh, like for one that we noticed was like driving through I think it's like driving through Wyoming, uh, just in the event that we had to go to uh, Washington uh, to live at any point. We were like, oh, like let, let's let's see how the drive would look from Georgia, and we would have to really time out or kind of like do some really good planning uh, when it comes to driving through Wyoming. Um, but I think that'll all change in the future. Uh, not to make this like a political channel, but uh, with this talk of the whole new infrastructure bill, that's one of the things that uh, they're really talking about. Um, improving on in the United States is the uh, availability of uh, fast chargers and charging stations uh, because I mean whether you like it or not and hopefully by the end of this vehicle you'll see like oh like electric vehicles aren't that bad like I, I should probably get one uh, I mean they, they are the future it just it really makes sense uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of sum that up a little bit later uh, so that, that's kind of like the destinations and the uh, the charging availability. So like they're they're everywhere uh, going. And the really cool feature is too is like so yeah you have you'll see fast charger locations uh, plot along the map too. But you can also just see normal charging stations. So like there we have a Publix right down the road where we do all our grocery shopping. Like most of you probably do as well. Um, or the Piggly Wiggly or the Walmart, whatever you guys use. Um, but a lot of places now are including charging stations there and they're 100% free, which is super dope Like where do you get free fuel from uh, free fuel from you know? It's not like there's like a gas station nozzle there And you just plug it up to your vehicle while you go to Publix uh, and you come out and you're all topped off You know, but in, if you have an electric vehicle like there it, it's present So it, it's super cool to leave the house uh, Do 30 45 minutes of shopping at a grocery store plug in your vehicle for free 
uh, and get charged up instead of paying the uh, maybe a couple ten or five five to ten cents per kilowatt at your house. You know, like you'll just get that additional extra mileage for free. Uh, and with that being said, too, another cool feature that a lot of people don't think about, and which really helped us out, like we went to we took uh, uh, my grandmother out to eat for her birthday uh, at a restaurant downtown. Uh, and in Savannah, like there's tons of parking garages everywhere. So we uh, hit this parking garage and luckily for us, like we've been there a couple times before and they have charging stations right at the very first floor, uh, right by the exit on the, on the parking garage. And it was like the traffic was horrendous. Uh, even getting in the parking garage was miserable. But meanwhile, like we knew those spots were there and we could check on the app to see if they were taken or not and they were open. So like we hit the parking garage, pulled right into the front charged it up uh and then hit, hit the restaurant and like we were there for maybe two and a half hours by the time we got back uh, the car was charged up more than it was when we uh initially started on the trip so i mean it's just it's just super cool um definitely a nice uh added bonus to driving an electric car um moving on from um charging at public charging stations um and kind of getting into the different charging uh, characteristics of chargers that are out there. So uh, I would say there's one, two, three, I would say there's four, I guess, levels of charging uh, that you can utilize when you have uh, an electric vehicle. Um, two of them you'll find at your house and then the other two you'll find out and about uh, if you're doing like trips or something like that. Uh, so the two would be uh, uh, charging from like your regular 110 outlet uh, on in your house so the same outlet you would plug in your iPhone charger or a lamp um, you know and a uh, toaster oven whatever it may be uh, your two prong little outlet 110 uh, that you can actually charge this vehicle on that I wouldn't recommend that if you are doing uh, daily commutes with this car and you need it to be fully charged up the following day but it depends on how far you commute. So with that being said, uh, utilizing that 110 charger, uh, I wanna say you get three to five miles per hour uh, recharged on the battery. Uh, not that much, uh, in my opinion. Um, but again, if you were only commuting, if, if you lived in a small town, if you're only commuting in and around town, maybe to your business or to your work, maybe it's a five or 10 minute drive, uh, then that, that wouldn't be bad for you, you know, like you're commuting into work, you maybe stop at a, a gas station or coffee shop on the way there, still no big deal, you're still within that range, uh, and you come back home. Uh, maybe say you you drove 10 uh, or maybe 20 hours, or I'm sorry, 10 or 20 miles in your normal daily commute, uh, cool. So like you plug it in your regular 110 outlet, uh, and then your car should be topped back off right, right where you left it at prior to uh, starting your trip that day uh, and you're good to go in about four hours uh, the other feature or I'm sorry the other charging capability that you have at your home uh, is what we use now uh, since you kind of graduated from the whole 110 outlet is the 220 so the 220 is the same outlet that you would utilize for uh, say maybe a, uh, a dryer uh, or maybe a welder or something like that. Um, it takes a lot more uh, amperage, if you will. Uh, we have, uh, when we have the electrician come out to install ours, uh, we have the choice between a 30 or 50 amp. So we will move the 50 amp just to help it charge a little bit faster and just get that electricity to it. Uh, but it was only like a $200 install and we got it installed in our garage. Um, so with that being said, uh, per hour of charge with a 220 charger, you're getting, uh, I want to say it's 20 to 23, 25-ish miles per hour. A lot more, uh, which is really nice because, I mean, my normal commute to work is about 25 miles one way. Uh, so in two and a half hours, as long as I don't really go anywhere else or drive anywhere crazy, you know, like the car is fully topped off. So it's it's really easy for me to get home after work, um, plug, the char I mean, plug the car in, and then before I even go to sleep at night, uh, the vehicle's topped off. But even if I had to do a, like a crazy amount of driving, um, I could plug the car in after work, and then by the time I wake up in the morning, uh, the vehicle's good to go regardless of how much I drove that day. 
another cool feature, um, so I mean all these, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of talk about it now with the, the charging capability, is that everything's kind of connected to your phone now. Um, my grandmother's Lexus is connected to your phone. Hell, my truck, the, the 2018 F-150 that I have is connected to my phone. You can start it from your phone, unlock the doors. At least with the Ford program, and I would say uh, with my grandmother's car, she has a Lexus. And I, I assume most car makers are doing the same thing. Uh, like it, it, you're just really connected to your vehicle at all times. Uh, so Ford has implemented the uh, the feature too that hey, if you're uh, if you know the vehicle needs to be charged prior uh, to the next day, you can set up alerts on your phone that will key you to uh, to remind yourselves that hey, like you got back in, maybe you had something going on, the kids got to you, the dog got to you, whatever. Um, and you forgot to plug the vehicle in uh, before you go to bed at night it can give you a little ring or a little buzz or a little a bell icon you know to, to remind yourself like hey i need to plug this bad boy in so i can be good to drive um uh, to work the next day with no issue or no concern that i'm going to run out of charge so those are the two outlets you have at the house uh, and then i say when you're out and about you'll have a two additional ones so you have like your normal traditional charging station uh, which still utilizes that 220 outlet uh, so same same parameters, 20 to 25 miles uh, recharged every hour, and that's the one that you'll find free uh, at uh, public uh, areas, parking garages, uh, grocery stores, etc. And then you can also find the quick chargers. Uh, so the quick chargers are not free, and I, for the life of me, I can't remember the the actual voltages they put out. But that would obviously have to be a lot larger than 220 because they charge your vehicle a lot faster and so depending on your charge uh, from everything that's been stated and from what we've seen during our trips as well um, you're looking at uh, a 20 to 85 percent recharge in approximately uh, 30 to 40 minutes which is super good so you're you you've been driving the car you're doing a trip uh, you got your car down to 20 percent charge left you plug this fast charger up to your vehicle uh, you step out of the car, stretch your legs, go get a bite to eat at a restaurant that's nearby or something like that, or a gas station, whatever you choose, or, you know, or if you're at a gas station you want to just get a snack, sit back in your vehicle, chat or wait a little bit, browse some stuff on your phone, do that for 30 or 45 minutes, and your vehicle's back charged up to 85% and you're back on the go. Super cool. Uh, you're, it's really not that much downtime. Uh, unless you're talking about you're trying to do maybe a, a 12 hour drive in a traditional vehicle, whatever mileage that might be. Uh, and then, yeah, you're gonna have to look in or factor in some more time uh, to get to your destination, just kind of attributing that to your stops every now and then to charge the vehicle back up. Um, but with that being said, so the key difference between all four of those is that uh, the ones at your house, I've mentioned before, so charging at your house, it's, it's, it's not expensive at all. Uh, I wanna say it's five cents, uh, uh, ranging between five to 10 cents per kilowatt, uh, depending on your electric company, and how much they're kind of gouging the, the prices for you guys uh, but it's still not a lot of money i don't know the the kilowattage on this bat battery uh i want to say i think it's like a 50 60 maybe i think 30 kilowatts somewhere around there um but we we've been plugging this thing in and we we haven't noticed a difference in our um electric bill at all um i'll say i've been driving significantly a lot more this month to work uh, so I can let you guys know and do like another recap video uh, at, the, uh, at the end of the month and kind of show you the difference of what it looks like in our electric bill. Getting back to the, the fast chargers. Uh, so with the fast chargers, as I said before, you're going to have to pay for them. Uh, once your Ford Pass rewards kind of run out. So once you, if you get a new vehicle, uh, and if you buy it new, uh, you'll get like kind of like a, a, bonus, a benefit with that is like Ford or uh, include 200 free uh, kilowatts of charge at um, charge stations in the Ford's network. So, like, you get the vehicle, you're driving around, uh, and like your first couple little trips you guys do as a family or yourself, or whatever the situation may be, uh, you'll get those free kilowatts uh, for free at a fast charger. And then after that, I want to say it's it's generally like when we charge it up, when we run, when, once we ran out of those those free points or free charges, um, going going from 20 to 85 percent charge, 30 to 45 minutes, it was generally about like six bucks, uh, which which is not expensive at all. 
pellets, two gallons of gasoline, uh, and instead with uh, an electric car, that two gallons of gasoline that you would have only got in a conventional vehicle, I'm now able to drive, uh, we'll say, uh, 200 miles uh, in this car. So, I mean, the, the savings are definitely there, guys. Um, and that kind of brings me to my next point, right? So we covered the charge stations. Uh, the next is like the cost benefit. Uh, so talking about the cost benefit. So as I said before, as you guys have seen on the channel, I have a F-150 as a V8. Um, gas mileage, I think, for the truck isn't bad. Uh, it might not be as good as a diesel. It might be better than some diesels. Uh, but generally, driving in and around, I get 20 miles per gallon, which I think is pretty good in a lifted truck with big tires, everything you can imagine. Like, like I, I didn't get the truck for the gas mileage. I got the truck for... Uh, the usability that I need it for in and around the house. Now, with that being said, when I have to fill Big Bertha up, it usually runs me about anywhere from 92 to I'll say $100, just regular 87. Uh, that's that's what I'm putting in it. Uh, and with that being said too, is the truck also has the extended range fuel tank. So uh, I want to say it's either 32 or 36 gallons of fuel it holds. So like I, I'm at the pump for a while when I'm filling up, which is the reason why the bill is so high. But with that being said too, is like for one whole tank of gas on my truck, uh, with the expectation of getting uh, around 19.5 to 20 miles per gallon, which I normally get, uh, I'm looking at like a 750 to a 780 mile range, uh, which is super good. Like it, it's pretty, I, I love seeing that when I get in the truck, just knowing that extra comfort of like, hey, if I wanted to drive to Miami right now, like there's no concern at all, you know, like get in the truck, haul down there and you won't have to fill up until you get there you know um, and that's that's super cool uh, and so with electric vehicles yeah that's not currently there uh, I'm sure with all the technology it will improve in the future and it, it should hopefully give you that uh, same safety cushion or that's the same thought process of uh, that you can go anywhere with your vehicle if you're not really concerned about range all the time so moving on from there, so that was kind of like the, the cost difference just in fuel, right? All right, well, let's talk about uh, the the cost that you would have to pay in service charges. So uh, expected maintenance with this vehicle is very minimal. Um, looking at the service interval for the Mach-E, your 100,000 mile uh, service uh, consists of doing uh, the flush of all fluids on the vehicle. Uh, so whatever uh, coolant and all that stuff that they actually throw in the vehicle, uh, they'll flush all that out, put fresh coolant in, uh, and I, a lot of people don't know, so I'll say like the battery, uh, the battery does get hot, especially if you have like a performance vehicle out there, like the Mustang Mach-E GT, it has a little bit more power, uh, so the battery can heat up as well, especially when you're demanding power from it. So like there's actually coolant systems built in, a uh, liquid cooling, uh, that help cool down the battery and the components to keep them at like the prime operating temperature. Um, so as all things like um, coolants or fluids need to be replaced to get them back to where they need to be uh so that's so that's what you have to do at 100,000 miles so besides that like that's it guys like th there's nothing else like there's no major services you need and even when it even come when it comes to minor services it, it's not like you have to change the oil on this thing uh there's no oil filter cost uh there's no spark plugs there's no belts uh none of that like it's just the only thing you have to change in this vehicle, uh, well, I would say from now until that 100,000 mile for that major service overhaul, will be replacing your tires when they get worn down, uh, replacing your brakes, your brake pads, and that even brings me to another point, right? So another plus with this vehicle uh, is uh, it has regenerative braking. Uh, so Ford has this included, it's called the one pedal drive. So literally this entire time I've been driving out here, I haven't hit the brake pedal once. Um, I've just been utilizing the accelerator. So the one pedal drive, you use your one pedal. Uh, and essentially what it does is like, it, it's kind of like a golf cart, if you will. Uh, you press on the gas, it accelerates the vehicle. Once you let off, uh, the car or the electric motor that has built into it has magnets inside that kind of reverse polarity. So like, as they're going to help you speed up, uh, it drives you forward. Uh, but as you want to slow down, it creates this resistance in the motor itself uh, which then helps to recharge the battery. Uh, so like when you brake, you're actually just giving juice right back to the battery of what you're utilizing for that little that little spurt of braking period right there. And that's it, it never touches your brakes at all. So 
kind of talking again about uh, how much you actually have to use your brakes. Um, you, you might not have to replace your brakes maybe until 60,000 miles or maybe until 80,000 miles. Like who, who knows? Like this vehicle hasn't been out long enough to actually know when that would need to be replaced. But the only time your brakes are actually engaged unless you don't utilize that one pedal drive or if you need to make an abrupt stop and the regenerative braking is not slowing you down fast enough, then you can gently tap on the brakes and they'll act like just like normal brakes. But other than that, once you use the one pedal drive, you come to a full stop, the brakes engage to stop your vehicle from rolling when you come to a dead stop, and that's it. Um, once you start driving again, you hit the accelerator, the brakes release, and you start going forward. Um, so it's, it's a really cool feature. Um, but yeah, so going back to expenses, so not really a concern for brakes or brake pads or rotors or anything like that anymore. The next thing I could think of would possibly be a cabin filter. I think that'd be the only thing that we'd have to replace in this uh, of concern that would be like a normal maintenance item. Uh, but then other than that, like, that's it. Uh, all right, moving on. So we talked about uh, concerns for charging, availability of chargers. Uh, we've talked about the different ways you can charge this vehicle and kind of get back on the road. Uh, we talked about the maintenance on this vehicle and the limited amount that there is. Um, one point we'll note, I guess, I can say that when it comes to people that love cars, right? So I, I would definitely consider myself a car enthusiast. If you're watching this vehicle, I would say you probably are too, right? Um, so like with that being said it, it is a weird thing and that is one complaint that i was just recently talking to a family member about when it comes to switching to electric he's like oh you know i i like my truck i like the sound of my engine i drive a harley america you know track it i got it i i understand what you're coming from and by no means am i saying hey like am i ever going to go 100 percent electric uh i have a supra it's <laughs> definitely not uh, fuel efficient at all, but it's not why I got the vehicle, right? Um, I told you before I have the truck. That's not really, it's it's not bad on gas, but it's not really fuel efficient either. It's not electric, you know? It's like, it, it's really not, uh, I'm not saving a whole lot of money driving the truck around. Um, but it, it's really not that point, you know? Like, when it comes to performance uh, metrics, uh, electric is gonna take the win the entire time. Uh, with this car, as you can see me have been driving around, there's no uh, there's no transmission in this car. Uh, transmission in a conventional vehicle is utilized to keep like your engine power band at a peak uh, operating range, so you get uh, more horsepower and torque from your engine to, to facilitate with, with, with you driving around, right? Uh, with the electric vehicle, like you don't have there, you don't need to get in any specific RPM, like the torque or whatever this motor has, your electric motor and your electric vehicle has, like it's instantaneous. You get it right there. Um, so uh, the, the performance metrics are through the roof. Uh, I would say the most impressive car that I've seen right now, and a little plug uh, into another uh, a YouTube account would be CarWow. Uh, it's really the only place I've seen this vehicle and it blows my mind uh, every time I see it is the, uh, they do some testing in this vehicle called the Rimac Navera. This, this, and it's a 100% electric vehicle uh, and the stats on this thing are bonkers. Uh, it has 1,900 horsepower, uh, all from electric motors once again, and it has 2,200 newton meters of torque. Like, what? On a car that you can drive on the road? Like, in my mind, like those are funny car numbers, you know? Like, what? What are we talking about? I see vehicles or cars, twin turbo Lambos or twin turbo Vipers, Calvo Motorsports, you name it. Uh, with those statistics going to FL2K or Texas 2K um, and putting down some crazy times. Uh, but meanwhile, you tell me like there's an electric vehicle that has stats that are more impressive than that. Now you can just find on the street that you'll never ever know that it's capable of that numbers unless you did your research, uh, but it's 100% quiet. Like it, you, you turn it on and it sounds just like this. And the only way you feel that blistering acceleration is when you step on the accelerator like that's crazy to me and this car on their channel i would say go guys check it out um it obliterates everything like from cars that i've seen on there the most impressive launch from a conventional vehicle that i've seen that i want i would love to have would be the 911 turbo um such an awesome car by porsche um and this rimac Navera car blew it out of the water like it was sitting still 
um, <laughs> it, it's just it's just crazy. Like it's an entirely different league of performance with electric vehicles. Uh, the only consideration is like once again, like when it comes to the charging times uh, and how long you can drive. Like it's not as easy as just hooking a hose up to it, uh, sitting at a gas station for I don't know what two three minutes to refill your vehicle, and then you're back on the road and mobbing up and down the streets. Like you're not doing that with an electric vehicle. You're gonna have to dedicate 30 minutes, you know, say to charge back up, and then you can go mob on the streets again and destroy everyone in the area. Um, but yeah, like I just think it, I think it's crazy. It's it's a funny thing to hear people say, but if you, if you want to talk about performance, uh, electric in the future, sadly, is gonna outperform conventional vehicles every day of the week. Um, but once again, there's a price figure associated with that. Uh, that electric car that I was mentioning, the Rimac Navera, uh, it's in the millions of dollars. I think it's like 1.8 maybe, two mil. Um, more than I have to spend on a vehicle, I'll tell you that much. Um, but like if you're if you're if you're loaded or um, if you're doing well for yourself, you know, maybe that's something that you're interested in and then you can afford. Uh, so moving on from there, um, so I, I want to say I think we covered everything that uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about today, uh, and I hope that kind of got rid of a lot of concerns you might have had of maybe if you're thinking about whether or not taking an electric vehicle is the route I should go or you as a family should go. Um, I think it makes 100% sense. Um, we talked about the charging, uh, vastly available despite popular belief on charging stations and where they're at. Uh, we talked about the ability to be able to charge from your house, super cool and not expensive at all. Uh, we talked about the ability of being able to charge on the go. Um, we talked about maintenance costs and the lack thereof with an electric vehicle, at least this particular vehicle so far. Um, what else did we discuss? Uh, we discussed performance metrics uh, with the vehicle uh, and actually how how well they perform with electric vehicles across the board. Like, and don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not saying like you can go get a Chevy Bolt and you're going to be out here destroying Mustang GTs and everything else like yeah that, that's not gonna happen um, but if you find the, the performance of your vehicle of your choice the Audi e-tron GT or maybe even this car maybe the Mustang uh, Mach-E GT you know like if you're if you're going for performance like you have to go get a performance electric vehicle um, we talked about uh, general life with a car right so like just driving around like your, your mileage uh, we've been driving this entire time. We start at 240. We're at a range of 215 miles right now. Uh, so I mean, like the 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 capabilities of the car are 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 through the roof. Um, I didn't want to allude to it too much earlier, but I, I really do think uh, electric vehicles are the way of the future. Like if if it was my choice, um, I would drive an electric vehicle. I would say 90% of the time. Um, the only time I wouldn't drive it, uh, of course, is when I'm taking the super out for for a, a joyride. You know, like. Uh, I want to hear the engine. I love turbo noises. Like I, I, I love all that. Uh, so don't get me wrong. Like I'm, I'm definitely not bashing my Supra by any means. Like that, that's always been my dream car. Um, but I would say it's just a different need. Like I don't, I don't need, I don't need 500 horsepower. It'd be nice to have every day. Uh, but I don't need 500 horsepower driving on the way to work. Um, this car is plenty fast enough uh, to accelerate through traffic, uh, pick up and go where I need it to. Um, uh, it's, it's it's not not a not a concern for me. Yeah, so I mean I, I Think that's a, a good stopping point for the video uh, What I can do is when I get home, I'll show you guys a little snapshot if you will of what the uh, What the range of the the vehicle looks like uh, when I get back to the house after Getting to the park hanging out there for a bit and then coming back. All right guys just made it back to the house now, as you can see, uh, coming a little bit closer on the dash. So all the way back in, 40 minute drive there, 45 air show minute drive back on the interstate. And the range is now uh, still 191 miles and 70% charge remaining. Uh, and then that'll really sum up the vehicle. Um, and kind of like the, the experience with uh, the Ford mach -E. um, Awesome experience. Uh, if you guys already have an electric vehicle, uh, please drop a comment below. Like tell me what you guys think is there anything I've said that um, that you guys disagree with um, let me know uh, and we can kind of have a discussion about it um, but besides that yeah guys I, I hope um, that some of this was insightful for you all uh, especially if you're on the fence about making that leap uh, to go electric or not um, 
and then yeah i'll enter that clip of what the uh the capability is or what the the range is left when we get back to the house and i'll see you guys in the next video take it easy peace